Go for it. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, we are here. It's uh, October 17th. And we're starting the meeting at 834. This is a regular um, meeting of the Sandpoint Tree Committee. And we're meeting at the uh, City Council Chambers, uh, 1123 Lake Street in <laughs> Sandpoint, Idaho. Um, members present, um, Bill Love, Molly um, O'Reilly, not Molly, <laughs> Molly McMahon, <laughs> sorry. Um, Eileen Atkinson, Gail Lister, Rich Del Carlo, Sharon Lewis, and myself. I'm Bob Wilson, chair of the committee, and also um, Maeve Nevins Louder, our, um, uh, our city forester. Uh, surprising. Um, okay, um, any announcements, um, general announcements, reports before we get into the regular agenda? Um, I guess I should say it to everyone. That tree, the sycamore that's, uh, or London thing or whatever it's called, yeah. on the corner there, uh, right next to the can handle plaza, handle plaza, or so, I don't know what they call it. It's yeah. a nice thing. And it's just sitting there. It is, yes. Dead. I took a look at it. Yeah. Two weeks ago? Yeah, it's going to happen. Okay, and so will a new tree be planted? It will, yes. Okay. It's part of the probably depending where we need to get through the master plan, but I'm assuming it's through the neighborhood woods program. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Did yeah, they call me this happen there that was different because it's it was very odd. It, it's not a young tree. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't looking thickly, right? No. He does look like he's pressing on the the grate, but oh. it wouldn't oh okay. there are a number of trees along kind of that same neighborhood where the the greats are constructing the the root collar of the tree and i was going to have garth take a look at it just to see if he could find anything and I don't know. Know. yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and um i have another one uh it's on the city property that's where the senior center is that they've called me about a few times and Garth looked at and that one also is um it's it, it needs yeah. to come down and it's losing its limbs right now and they call frequently so we yeah, that's one of the ones on the list and that one was identified to um maybe turn it into one of those artistic totems mm -hmm. did i tell you all about this guy no um, yeah we were talking about it internally with heather upton she's our new art and historical preservation officer and she was going to talk to her committee about it the arts and historical preservation committee to see if it was something they were interested in so i need to get an update from her to see if they do want to do that because that would mean that we would actually keep the, as much height as we could so that it could be sculpted into a, a sculpture and they're going to have a ceremony to honor it beforehand are they they i somehow i think the senior citizens wrote it and said yeah oh. There's going to be a. So, yeah. is this one of the big Ponderosa Ponds? The one we saved, like what, 10 years yeah, ago? I think, yeah, I think it's been um, on the list for a while to watch. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's what Garth was calling me. So. Oh, I have Gail's painting. That's right. And we, oh, yeah. and we, <laughs> did it make it? Yes, we yeah. had my guy, a whole oh. bunch of artists all together, and we all honored it by painting, and they saved it. Oh, but then wow. Cement and uh, mm -hmm. asphalt. And, so it goes in our, our library display. Thank you. Well, that's, a, that's sad, but thank mm -hmm. you for honoring it. Mm -hmm. So I'll keep you posted on that for next time. But um, yeah, Garth needs to look at it. I think he comes next Sunday. Sure, I'll have to double check. Thank you. Yeah. Any other announcements? Um, if not, um, let's uh, approve. Um, take a look at the minutes from the last meeting and I did Melissa is not here but I did want to thank her publicly for uh, such a thorough job of mm -hmm. documenting um, the discussion uh, I uh, I personally find that very helpful because I, I agree. a month between meetings I kind of yeah uh, what, what what transpired kind of fades away so um, I'm, I'm thankful for this uh fine review of that so um, any uh are there any corrections, additions to the minutes? I wasn't here. I wasn't here. Yeah. I liked reading them. Oh, and I, I should I should mention um from now on, anytime we have a vote, 
we're going to do a roll call vote. Um, and if you are not here for the meeting, then you would be you would abstain. Um, so, um, so uh, anyway, I would like a motion to approve the minutes as written. So moved. Second. Okay. Bill moves and Eileen seconds. Um, in favor, Bill Love. Aye. Uh, Eileen. Aye. Uh, Molly. Abstain. Gail. Oh, abstain. Rich. Aye. Uh, Sharon. Abstain. And Bob, I uh, that... vote yes. So we have four yeses. So, so the motion carries to approve the maps. Okay, um, that out of the way, um, our big piece of business, we're going to be taking a look at the, um, the management plan. I want to thank everyone for reviewing it. There's a lot to digest in this thing. Um, and uh, we've got a lot of comments in, and um, Maeve's going to give us an update on that. Um, but then, then of course, we'd like to take a look also um, what the process is from here and how we can support it and, and help move things along too. So um, with that, I think I'll turn it over to Maeve. Sure. I, I want to echo your gratitude. Thank you for everybody that left comments on your out. If you, if you want to get comments to me, just let me know if they're coming so I'm alert. comments across the board were pretty much very similar. Um, uh, in addition, I shared it with Garth and with um, uh, Jim. I'm drawing a blank. Is it Jim? Jim Block. Well, Jim wrote it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, Jim, um, Jim hasn't had our comments yet. No. So in January, Jennifer is okay. also reviewing it. Um, the we'll Department of Lands, Urban Forestry Coordinator. Yes. Yeah, so I'm trying, I'm, yeah, and I, I'm not Michael's, calling his name. Yeah. It used to be yeah. Mike Stevenson, but uh, he's the, he's the, resources. He is Garth's boss. Yeah, he yeah. He came here and did a visit with me a week or two ago, and and they did a tour. Um, and Matt specializes in community assistance programs, and um, he's very curious on it. He just provided some brief comments. He was going to give me more. He was traveling, so it wasn't. It's not even worth sharing. It was more grammar stuff. So it wasn't, mm -hmm. nothing. Nothing too big. He just referenced other manuals that we could look at from other places that would be helpful. And then he was going to send me some specifications to use for planting. Um, but some things that I wanted to point out to you on page ten. Um, it's the standpoint urban forestry management goals. So I think it's important that we wrap our head around the goals that are identified in here because yeah. we need to get behind them and then mm -hmm. it'll be up to the committee to help share that message with everyone. Is there a way to sign in on my computer? I mean, just, I have the document. I wanted to pull it up from my email. Um, uh, you, you is there a way the to like, yeah. The Wi-Fi is free. Yeah, you should be able to just go to your Wi-Fi and click City of Sandpoint. And it's, there's an open portal to that. Is I can actually, maybe? yeah, you can have, I have Gail. Well, okay. I know. Well, Gail doesn't have one of them for you. It's okay, guys. Yeah. I've given you a copy, right? You had a copy. And, um, Anyone that asked for a copy, I'd give a copy. But then I didn't ask because I felt badly about the paper. So, yeah, I read it on the screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So let us know when you're on. You can look at this one if you want, Molly. This is an earlier version, but it basically is the same. Okay. If you don't need it, I'll. 
I'll need it back, but it's well, yeah. yeah. I think page 10 should be the same. What we're looking for is the goal. We can, we can, um, I can Okay, so let's see here. Is it, are you guys looking at page 10? Mm -hmm. I'll just yep. read through them. So the Sandpoint Urban Forestry Management Plan Goals. Um, the first one is Sandpoint City Council adopts and implements an urban forestry management plan. Well, yes, that's part of the process. So go into your process. The next step would be after we um, get all of our review comments in, I will get them all into one document for Jim to update the, the draft. And then he'll get that back to the city. And then it'll go on the agenda for the city council. And Jim is actually um, part of his agreement is to come and present that so that there's a couple questions. He may do it virtually because I understand he's been traveling quite a bit and he's been out of the country. So um, I'm trying to get that through before the end of the year. That's part of his contract is to have it through city council. So that's the first goal. The second one is provide adequate tree maintenance funding to sustain Sandpoint tree canopy based on council staff and then I changed it to PAR board. That should be tree committee, stakeholder, and resident input. Um, so that's about the funding. And that's a call to our budget. And that's something that I know. Which one is the call is about regarding the budget? The second one? Provide adequate oh, tree oh, there it is. funding. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. That's critical. That's a really big one. Yeah. That's, that's the whole right? yeah. That's, well, that's yeah. So how that's do we do that? And I, and I would love to see that get lots of attention and even more attention in this. Well, see, and that's where, where Jim, that's where Jim wants us to, to step up. Yeah. Well, yeah. and that's what that, is this management plan? I think needs mm -hmm. to really spell that out. Mm -hmm. The advocacy part. So we so we have so, something that we're promoting. Right, and I think you know there's different mechanisms to do that. Do any of you want to talk about ideas that you have for how? Well, not specifically ideas, uh, but but Jim supports this goal. Uh, that one table that to me is one of the most yeah. critical yes. things in the entire document, where kind of a city the size of Sandpoint should be spending the ninety eight thousand dollars in, in in tree maintenance. Yeah, I think in that table it says we're currently <laughs> spending what is it fifty seven cents. Yeah. Um, and but it, we should be spending yeah. according to I guess other successful yeah. urban forestry mm -hmm. programs compared to that eleven dollars something. Yeah. That's a, a, a huge, a a huge yeah. And and how do we make that happen? Mm -hmm. Because all of the 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 great ideas and the goals and everything that are spelled out in this management plan. Well, one I think we've been talking about these <laughs> for <laughs> literally decades now. And it all boils down to how we can financially support these goals and, and a full-time urban forester. Um, and just, yeah, that was what I got after reviewing this management plan was that is for me, the most critical part of this. And that is what needs to be emphasized because I think we're all fairly well on board with the, you know, what a good urban forestry plan looks like for this town. It's how do we financially support it? Yeah. Yep. And mm -hmm. I would add in reading that, that provide adequate tree maintenance funding. It seems like that should be provide adequate um, funding for a tree program. I mean, it's not just the maintenance, maintenance is within a program, a larger yeah, program. program. Yeah. And the program, I mean, the funding is going to include, you know, the staff, and they're not just going to do maintenance, they're going to be doing planning and, you know, research and. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of um, reference to continuing education for the city for Forester as mm -hmm. well, um, and credentials and all of that. So it does elevate the level of um, qualifications, I would say. Okay, so I think we're all in agreement with that one. <laughs> <laughs> the third one, maximize and expand the urban tree canopy, create a tree planting plan, promote proper planting of new trees and diversification of species, incorporate tree planting into community planning. 
So that's a lot kind of wrapped into mm -hmm. the overarching goal of maximizing and expanding the urban tree canopy. So it's interesting because he does say create a tree planting plan. That was something that he did offer as a service. We could look at different mechanisms in the future of if that's something that we make a recommendation to him or how we go about doing that. But to me, that's a direct, um, you know, that's something that would come out of it asking me. So if it's, if, you know, that is a deliverable, I would say, is a tree planting plan. Okay, my specific question mm -hmm. for this one mm -hmm. regarding urban tree canopy is, and maybe I missed it, it probably is in this management plan somewhere. What is our current uh, tree canopy percentage? And um, what is the goal? Like, what are those numbers? Where are we at now? And what is our goal for the city? And maybe this was addressed in here and I missed it. Yeah, it was. Um, he, it's, so what is that specific? So he broke it out into, and I'll have to, sorry. Yeah. To jump to the exact page, it might be a stretch. Mark, no, that's okay. Um, especially after. It, it's good I to know that it's in there somewhere. So he I talks know. about it. It's pretty pretty early on too, he talks about, um, he breaks it out by residential parks. Oh yeah, I did and, see that. And, yeah, and okay. that's where he broke it out in. So, yeah, so I do parks, right of way, that. residential areas and what the canopy should be in those areas. Uh, page 14, right. as it shows mm -hmm. um, canopy coverage goals, mm -hmm. you know, by, by the different mm -hmm. units, single family, develop parks, commercial streets right away. That shows the goal. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure where it shows the current percentage within each of those right. those categories. Yeah. What are we shooting for? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The 14 uh, uh, shows what the goal is, what we're shooting for. I don't know where those numbers came from. I, I'm curious about that. I, I think that's just a really general thing that probably, you know, isn't a very general. So he did look at the inventory. I'm just right. wondering. There's a photo. That's a really good question. Because he starts out the beginning talking about the inventory thing that he did. You see on page 13, he addresses sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Cover calls. Yeah, but but it's it shows what you know ideal cover should consist of, but I'm not but, seeing but what the current is, in comparison yeah. to yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah that's mm -hmm. so where are we now? That's the question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, and I guess I I don't know. I think fifteen percent for commercial is really low, but that's my humble opinion. Yeah. And and yeah. and to be, be able to have a, a better appreciation for that like uh, every, in regards to 15 percent is that low or not where are we right now mm -hmm. like and, you know, like are we at 10 yeah, percent and we can increase it by five percent you know or are we already at 20 percent and that was the we met our goal yeah we met our goal <laughs> and yeah. Gone beyond. yeah and we want to keep it or well, do we know that from the inventory that you've done yeah. in the past? Um, I think that the, this percentage of um, canopy coverage um, is more better evaluated by like aerial survey, mm -hmm. yeah. where they can look at how much uh, cover there is and how much open space there is between mm -hmm. the trees. Um, I mean, my I don't really measure how much ground that's covering. I know how many trees are out there. And, and that's but, another good point. How yeah. do we measure it? How well, that is a good point. Yeah, from above, because we're saying and he did you, measure it in here somewhere. He just no, I, I don't recall it, but yes, yeah, typically done like Bob he said. Through, he did through. measure. He did do okay. some inventory, and he looked at yours as well. Mm -hmm. But he he also said it was incomplete, and he made a recommendation that it get that we spend money to have a, a more <laughs> um, developed inventory. <laughs> Um, and then, no, yeah, and then inventory versus canopy. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the two separate yeah. things. Right. Yeah. Inventory is the the number of trees, the placement of the trees, the species, and the and the yeah. condition and the and how much tree. Oh, how much space there is so to, to plant to. An aerial analysis. Yeah, yeah, an aerial photo interpretation. Yeah. And, and the canopy is related to the size of the tree. 
I mean, like we, we could have a million little trees, yeah. right? Have you know, two percent canopy or whatever, right? Right, and, and that's it, why they 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 go together having an inventory and having that, mm -hmm. that, that the, you know, the number of the, or the percentage of canopy cover. It's, yeah, you, you need both of the that that set of information to have a complete picture. And the downtown area is always going to have a, a, a low percentage because building sidewalks and streets get in the, in the, yeah. in the way of your tree canopy. And so I'm parking. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we can yeah. clean that up. Yeah, I think those numbers are just very, very generalized. Very general. too. Um, and they may not actually apply to our community. Uh, that specifically, okay. but um, but uh, I think you know if we if we can get um, uh, a city forester or like a full time city forester here with a that's an arborist, um, that they would be able to maybe set some more specific goals, maybe even some stepwise goals. That, so let's say in five years we want to be here, in ten years, and so forth. So just to clarify, I'm going to clean up. I'm going to work with him to clean that up on what our current canopy is. Yes. And then also to understand more about where he got those numbers from that he's referencing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So then number four, coordinate and integrate local urban forestry goals into city and regional planning processes. So this is a good one to use right now because we are currently updating our comp plan, comprehensive plan. So that's great. We have leverage right there to be a part of that, as well as our um, the little Sand Creek watershed um, recreation plan. I think you can add some reference in there. What I want to be cognizant of is not just referencing, cross-referencing. I want to pull out what is it that like for example, on the comp plan, what is it we want to take out of this and put in there? And that's going to probably take a deeper dive. What exactly we should pull out? Because sometimes we have an opportunity, for example, in the comp plan at the next planning and zoning meeting, which I believe is this week on Tuesday, I'm pretty sure, they are, they are actually reviewing the first draft of the natural resources chapter. Well, we're not, we haven't Staff hasn't provided all their feedback yet. It's just the first round of review with um, of what the consultants have done and with planning and zoning. But that's a perfect opportunity for some of this content to be put in there. And maybe some of this is above and beyond just referencing it in the comp plan, but it's actually we pull out some key goals out of this. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? So it'd be great to distill this further and make recommendations. And I, I would lean on you all if. Um, does anyone want to tackle that with me? I, I am providing staff staff input to the comp plan, but I don't really want to talk yeah. about it. I just that plan's moving fast, mm -hmm. and that chapter of natural resources is being reviewed and, ri and written right now. So mm -hmm. we could we could pull stuff out of this now if we wanted to, and it could you know it's draft because this hasn't been adopted yet. Mm -hmm. Can you give an example, Maeve, of what you like something you would recommend pulling out of this plan? Into so, the, when they talk the, about specifically a, a simple one, is when they were talking about when Jim was talking about the um, percentages of canopy cover in different areas, those are land use related right. okay. um, criteria. Yeah, that I would, I would say anything like that. Yeah. Right. Right. Land use and zoning. Uh huh. Kind of um, I'd have to think a little bit more about it, though. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I'm just trying to think. It, I mean, wouldn't the entire comp plan each? I don't know what all the components are, but wouldn't they all have a tree component? I'm just trying to. I mean, housing. They do. Commercial. Yes, but in the natural resources section, I think is where you might highlight. But wouldn't it, like, if we wanted in all of these, we have a goal mm -hmm. for each. Mm -hmm. Single family, developed mm -hmm. parks, natural parks, mm -hmm. commercial. 
I mean, there's a tree component in all of those. So maybe, maybe. I mean, the entire is section. I'm not sure yeah. I'm asking you about yeah, that. Yeah, or yeah, I mean, let, me, let me ask Amy. If more. there's a percentage goal for each of these top plan components, which there is. Sorry, you know. I should clarify. Amy is, Amy <clears throat> Tweeton is our city planner. And she's also on our. Let me clarify that with her. It, I, forgive me if this is a silly question, but would, wouldn't the comp plan just automatically have this at the incorporate end? Yeah. It does. This urban forestry plan? It like, does. However, okay. there's a natural resources section. Okay. So the natural resource sec section has an opportunity to add criteria. So you're just above and beyond. Just above and reference. beyond. That's why I was saying if there's yeah, two or even that we just re-emphasizing what's already mm -hmm. in here, mm -hmm. highlighting it. Or even just um, <laughs> it says it in here somewhat, but directing to mm -hmm. the plan mm -hmm. that just exists there. You know, so it could just be a statement, right? Mm -hmm. That For, when yeah. making natural resource decisions or whatever it might be, you know. Reference reference this document for a street. Cities or before it can I think it can be simple so that you don't have yeah. to <clears throat> um I don't know what the comp plan currently looks like for that. So yeah, I think Sean made a good point there, but I'm I'm not quite clear on is this urban forestry plan eventually going to be a piece of the comprehensive plan or are we just gonna no. Put notes into reference. This will be this will exist reference. independently. Correct. It would exist independently, but it would be it, it is actually already referenced in the draft plan, making okay. the assumption that it gets adopted. Mm -hmm. Because they're moving simultaneously. And I don't know which one's gonna get adopted first. Yeah. If I roll the dice, I guess this one. Mm -hmm. That one takes longer to write. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then they just started the process. It, in this plan since we're talking about this right now this urban forestry management plan that Jim has compiled is that going to replace our arbor arboreal cultural manual no no ah no. that's a separate document okay okay this in fact this there are references in Jim's plan about the manual okay yeah. and to kind of update it to uh more current uh, industry standards right. and things like that. So because so, yeah. it does seem like there's a lot of overlap That's between right. yeah. these yeah. Well, yeah. two. Yeah. Yeah. But, and, and and the point he makes that 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 we discuss when we develop that that manual is that we don't want that to be part of city code because then anytime you want to change it, you have to go through a, a, a code change. And so it's always going to be an independent document that that uh, that could be easily changed. Okay, do we feel comfortable going on to the next goal? Sure. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see here. Complete, maintain, and update the inventory of sandpoint trees to improve management and maintenance of the tree population. I think that's sure. pretty yes. acceptable. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of questions as, as to how that's going to, to work out and been involved in it. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, yeah, it was a lot of money. It was my takeaway. I mean, you know, we, we used yours and then I had a small budget to have a sample done. And, um, and mm -hmm. then there's the topic of the two inventory programs. You know, the, the state provides an, uh, the tree inventory program that I use both. Jim set us up with his, but the state's one is so robust and we, we have a free program that we use that software with versus gems we have to pay for. So, oh. um, so we're gonna have to look at that internally from a budgetary yeah. constraint that's an operation. Yeah, and, and you know, maybe just to get you up to date on that. I mean, there was, the, there was um, we used to keep it, uh, the, in, the inventory in a uh, access database. Um, okay. And and that was uh, and we're sort of still in the process of um, transferring that over. So a lot of the a lot of the um, trees are still are located attached to a property rather than the, the location on the street. They're not 
So, so there's still a lot of updating that needs to happen okay. there, as well as um, other other uh, changes we might want to make in the way we um, collect inventory data. So the but, reference but, property. I'm sorry. Can you the um the access that? database listed the trees as attached to a property address, okay. but they weren't like a, it wasn't like a GS. GIS program where it has a specific point on the ground where the tree oh. actually is. Mm -hmm. So, um, so one of the things I had been doing in the in the last few years I had been um, working with the inventory was to um, uh, try to go out along each street and and actually move those because they're like they exist as little dots on the map. Right. And I put them I put them in from the building. They're they're sitting on top of the building, so I moved them out onto the and wow. line them up with the correct trees. Okay, that makes sense. So it was, okay. it was but it was very time consuming. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't, we never did More finish money. that process. So it was It'd still a lot, really some of that. Great intern project. Yeah. Or student project. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it seems um, like that and then adding, he made reference, he talked about our inventory lacking in maintenance recommendations. Yeah. And I think that if it was GPS and it was in our GIS system, we could set up a program of maintenance where we'd be pruning a whole like, some cities they do, for example, they'll do a whole section of town every five years. So it's like this rotating thing based on their budget. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can track what you've maintained and then it also triggers, GIS will trigger a work plan for the maintenance department. So GIS is this really powerful tool for managing your, your staff and then your budgets. And so I could see us getting there. We're in the process of updating our GIS right now. So mm -hmm. yeah, there, there may be some opportunities for that. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure if we we're still going to be able to continue to use the, um, the program the Department of Lands has where we that we started with because you had mentioned some yeah. compatibility issues. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I think we're still using it. And okay. Yeah, I'm all set up on it. Okay. I've been using it. It's a wonderful program. So it is. I think yeah. that, and that's what you mean by the state program? Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's even beyond the state. It's kind of a national program that as I understand it, and 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 you know, keep in mind that that kind of in the future, it's going to have support. It's going to have changes and updates and things like that that are that are gathered kind of from from cities all over the country that, that and, and and states that that use it. Whereas maybe uh, an individual consultant's program uh, five years from now may not be supported if that right. consultant's no longer in business. And, yeah, I mean um, everything about the. The IDL's community forester consultant. What is he? Mm -hmm. know, urban, forestry, <laughs> urban community forestry <laughs> coordinator is the consultant. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> generic. He he was telling me the capabilities of that program yeah. as well, and he it sounds like that is the way to go. Yeah, it's a national it's program. Yeah, yeah. I, I would just make recommendations. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. not something that the Idaho Department of Lands kind of kind of conjured up, but it's a national program that's used by by states and cities all over the, the country. Yeah, it seems like it's the preferred yeah. way. Mm -hmm. And we don't know, Jim has a proprietary one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's nuances with, with that as well, but also advantages. So whenever we're looking at property, we look at the pros and cons. I think at the end of the day, one that's adopted on a statewide and national level that's free. So the introductory baseline stuff and already has the majority of our inventory in it, to me, makes a lot of sense. But yeah. yeah. And another big plus of the Idaho DL, IDL um, program is that it is available. Uh, anyone can access it to look at where what's in the city and what's the what the trees are and get the tree identification, get the size and um, I don't, maybe a, maybe a little condition. Public. Is it yeah, it is. Idaho? What's that? Access Idaho. Is that what it is? Or uh, no, it, it's Idaho yeah. Department of Lands, but it's on our web, our yeah, it's city our website. Website was a link there too. Yeah, yeah well, our staff uses it all the time. When we get a call about a tree, oh, the first good. thing we do is pull it up and see if it's good. inventoried, and then see if it has a history. You know, because you put a, you all, whoever all has worked on that, has put a lot of information in there. Yeah. So yeah. It's, a, it, yeah. it's, a, it's an incredible tool. That's great. Yeah. yeah. It, it's used great all the time. It's being so. utilized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, anyway, 
I don't disagree. I think let's keep updating this. But okay. when I when I whenever I look at that, I think of how how are we going to complete and maintain update the inventory because there's costs associated with that even right. in kind. So we'll have to figure that out. Um, okay, moving on. The next one. Review existing tree ordinance and incorporate the recommendations and goals of the city's tree management plan. Adopt the ordinance into the city code and implement ordinance enforcement practices. So this is, he wrote about a lot of this in the back. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have my head fully wrapped around it yet. Did anyone else really dive into that? It's, it really, I think that's something we have. We do have an attorney that specializes, who's actually one of our attorneys for the city specializes um, in forestry because his background is in, yeah, in yeah, natural resource that. forestry. Yeah, so I think that that's a section that we'll want him to review. Um, yeah, that would be yeah, my I think it's really important. I didn't know how to tackle it either. Yeah, it's- and I don't think that, was the actual ordinance in here the way it's written now? Um, or no. I don't think- no. so. It was just saying what was missing it. or should yeah. be added. Yeah. Yeah, that one table on page. Um, Table two, which is between pages 26, so it would probably be page 27, that compares the city, the Sandpoint Ordinance, the, the number of cities in the Northwest region as, as, to, as, as to the components of what's in, a, in, their, in their ordinance. Right, right, right. And from the, um, the survey, it seemed like people want the uh, you know, clarity yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and actually want to see that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. but again it, it also is it's money it's, you yeah. know, who's, who's, yeah. in, who's yeah. enforcing it right. urban no. forester mm -hmm. and is that only possible if we have a full-time urban yeah. forester yeah, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. and even with the inventory i'm just to go yeah. back to yeah. that yeah. about yes. how it's going to get done that's yeah. a person yeah. Yeah. Money. Yeah. A designated, you know, mm -hmm. job deliverable. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Does the ordinance need to be developed um, well, only after an urban program is in place? Because it's going to be. <laughs> well, there is one right? right now. We have one in place and we have it cited in two different places. In two different codes. We have it, I believe, in development. Let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. This is going to take a little bit. So. I guess I'm, yeah, just wondering about the order. Like, do we work on it with a lawyer? Yeah. Before the program's in place. Oh, before this. Before we have an urban forestry program that's funded mm -hmm. and has a person. Because what comes yes. first? What Are comes first? Yeah. Yeah, the, the forester or the ordinance? Yeah. I mean, I know a, an attorney would be, but that urban foresters, you know, in an ideal world is certified, educated. Um, I don't know. It just seems like yeah. what for me, it's what what's the purpose of this plan if there's no budget to support it? So does that mean you have to like guarantee there's going to be a budget? Before you can even pass a plan like this, yeah. It, it, yeah. What, what's the process? Mm -hmm. Because it seems to me that at the very least, it needs to go hand in hand. If you are passing this plan, that means that you are also really? willing passing the budget that is required to support the plan. I, I don't know. It doesn't quite work like that. I think. I think. I think. Well, I don't know, but um, my my thought was that we, we would get um, this plan approved, and then that would give us leverage to um, to try to um, get the because this is going to be a, this is going to be a process. It's gonna, right. it's going to be a process before to um, they can't just say oh we need this much funding that um, they might have to uh, actually increase the uh, tax base well, yeah. to pay for it. And um, and that sort of opens up a can of worms there, but um, uh, it does. but I, I think it's uh, I think if we can just get this thing 
approved by city council, then then that gives us some leverage to move ahead right. on and some of these on the budget on hiring a, a city forester full time and, and other. And to, other to be clear, we do have a, a program now. That's I am allocated to this as part of that program. Yeah, you're part of the program, mm -hmm. so we do have a program. It just needs to be. Oh, we have a program that has been so ridiculously underfunded <laughs> for for decades now. I, this is the program don't that we disagree have with you. Yeah, I know you don't. I don't disagree at all. I, I'm just, as you know, <laughs> just want to. Just but I want you to know that say there that is a program. So what he's doing is making recommendations and adding the budgetary component to it to give clap. That's you know just like what Bob yeah. is saying and is saying okay. So you basically what this does if you adopt this plan, City Council. Then you now agree to fund this yeah. to yeah. a no, level I, of service. No, so he talks extensively so very valid. about level. Of, there's yeah. a, a description of level of service, and that is a phrase that we use. That's a powerful phrase. We use that in planning a lot to be able to say, say that again. Level of service. Level of service. Mm -hmm. okay. So I, I can speak to it more in the parks context, but in the parks and recreation management plan, for example, if the level of service standard for I'll use dog parks. <laughs> if if we have a population of 8,000 people and, and the level of service standard by the industry standard says you're supposed to have, you know, two dog parks for every 5,000 people of an acre or more, and we have zero, mm -hmm. then you're not meeting a level of service. So that's what this this that statement does. So this is providing the level of service that so you right. have something to refer to. Right. So right now, what he's basically, at least my interpretation, and I think Bob, you have a good grasp on this. If I'm if I'm off mark here, is he's saying is that we have some sort of a program here. We are underfunding it, and we are not meeting the level of service for the maintenance and the enforcement. So we have no no one that is you know. Yeah really enforcing it, the inventory is lacking. So he's calling out all the different levels mm -hmm. that were deficient in, which is powerful. There's a lot in here. That's why I really wanted to bring it to your attention. And we may want to have us, we might want to have another meeting to dive deeper in this after it's digested and more mm -hmm. from that perspective, because essentially what we're, we're going to be doing is asking council to yeah. you know, find money mm -hmm. yeah. and prioritize this, which historically yeah. haven't been doing more than just yeah. a fraction. It, and, I, and these standards have mm -hmm. been around. A lot of the standards that so the standards are presented are in here, this. Right, but the function, I mean, this is reiterating the standards that I think we've already yeah. have, have had, aspired to. Have aspired to and we've been talking about for, for yeah. decades. And this is great because it's reiterating those mm -hmm. standards. Um, and and uh, hopefully it does give us more leverage. Oh yes, it will. Um, because it's, it's a respected document. We have a plan. Yeah, well, respected we plan. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sharon. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I I share your your comments totally. And then the comparison that I would make is uh, kind of the old North Idaho pay as you go mentality. I've got a piece of property. I want to build a house on it. I want. I would love to have the house, three thousand square feet, and the the high end components and and things like that. But that's going to cost this amount of money. Well, that's that's the plan that, that Garth has given us. Instead, what I can afford right now is maybe kind of you know I could start with you know a, a, a tiny house. And with a, with an add on to it, and so you know that what's lacking in this in this plan is well, if you don't have a full time forester, if you don't have the ninety eight thousand dollars a year to to maintain your trees, then it doesn't say what well, what yeah what can you do with with ten thousand dollars? What can you do with with twenty thousand dollars? Yeah, so there's no phasing. <laughs> yeah, that's you know, right. Or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so, yeah. so, so I'm guessing to go to the city council, they may adopt the plan, but at the same meeting, they're certainly not going to say, uh, yeah, we're going to add $100,000 to the budget for a city forester position and $98,000 to your budget for, for tree maintenance and now go implement your plan. It's so probably I think one of the, one of the main uh, points that, that is really good is emphasizing that the trees are as much of the infrastructure yeah. as the roads and yeah. the sidewalks and, and the power lines mm -hmm. that that is such a critical part of the city yeah. that hasn't been i mean that we know that but yeah, yeah. but hasn't been 
uh, actually, you know, state. So I think that that's pretty, that's yeah. 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 And then a lot of this plan is educational yes. and informing those, those benefits that, uh, that, uh, like you say, Rich, we know about, but, but, uh, I'm sure many council members don't, don't understand uh, those benefits, yeah. but they are articulated in the, <laughs> in the plan. Great analogy. <laughs> that actually really helped me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and what Molly just said about it, it lacks kind of the different phases, um, or implementing maybe. the different phases. Um, and, um, it, I would like to see that, like, what does the urban forestry program for Sandpoint look like with this budget? What does it look like with this budget? What does it look like with our, you know, our ideal budget, $11 per, yeah. mm -hmm. per yeah. citizen? Um, because I think the city council needs to see, like, if we keep it at 50 cents per citizen, like, this, this we can only accomplish this much. There's going to be very little tree maintenance. There's going to be very little public outreach. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and there's going to be very little money to complete the, the inventory. I, I mean, they've got to oh, see yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, and yeah. maybe as a, as a committee, we can help spell that out for them. But, um, but if you're able to increase it to even just $2 per citizen, what what the, what can that budget accomplish? Because mm -hmm. it still probably can't accomplish everything, mm -hmm. like all of the goals. But what goals can it accomplish, and what are you willing to to give up as a consequence yeah. of not funding yeah. this, and yeah. have them make that decision? Mm -hmm. Good point. Mm -hmm. And and Jim does does point out in one place that that basically doing nothing there is, there is a consequence to doing nothing. Yeah. And uh, if the status quo is, is what you're satisfied yeah. with, then look at the increased liability you're going to have yeah. for, for tree failures and right. uh, personal and human liability. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, things like that. that because because that, that, that is what's happening right now. Yeah. Like that so is that's what, the state we're in right That's now. what they see yeah. every day. That's what they're experiencing. And if they aren't already seeing the problem, then maybe it really does need to yeah to be visualized yeah um or you know in a way that they can see the goals. Goals. that part's fun mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. you know and imagine yeah. what that that big yeah you know beautiful mm -hmm. house is gonna look, it look like. like yeah yeah <laughs> so but. one thing that i think is important to point out is we just did the strategic plan with council and you know the there's a very loud um part to infrastructure and that's what we can see and we can experience the sewer treatment plant the water the lack of water the new development and what you know going back to the infrastructure side and making sure that it's really obvious to them yeah that this is infrastructure i mean i think making yeah. that statement and really drilling that into council has it's just as important as important as a pipe yeah yeah mm -hmm. and how to actually get it as part of the infrastructure mm -hmm. but keeping accounting and budget like how to actually move trees over into that yeah. department because yeah. right. infrastructure um, is just automatically require budget. Mm -hmm. Like you don't because once it's um, a recognized a component of infrastructure, there you know just different funding, uh, be better funding opportunities. Yeah, whether it's um, just a regular budgetary, uh, you know, mm -hmm. standard budget or grants or whatever it is. And I don't know if it says that in here. And but. we can we can even as a committee start referring to it as our urban forestry infrastructure. <laughs> yeah, you know, start yeah. using that yeah. word, you know, more. Yeah. Um, or city of Sam points infrastructure budget slash urban forestry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is a subcomponent. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like. It really yeah, does need to right, significantly right, right. be under the, the infrastructure bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Is that possible? Oh, well, okay. does it say that in here? <laughs> I guess I, 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 I haven't taken much time. Look, but re, could be definitely reiterated. I just want to go back to the codes real quick if I can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. um, there's several mentions. If you just go to our code, the city of Sandpoint's code library, 
we just go to our website and go to the code. Um, chapter 15 is all about the urban forestry. But if you just hit search and you type in urban forest, you'll find that it's brought up in several different codes um, depending <coughs> on you know, what the code is referencing. So it's, it sits in the development code and then it sits over in um, uh, kind of the management, I forget how, how to articulate that. Mm -hmm. And that can be a real problem with code is that over the years it gets totally dissected and moved around and where something should be, it isn't, and it's over mm -hmm. here and it isn't there. And that's a, an entire exercise mm -hmm. to go through each, which again is kind of what I was saying <clears throat> about the con plan, is that really trees are a part of each component of the content and should be each part of each component of the code if I'm, if I'm thinking about mm -hmm. it right. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to, um... Yeah, chapter 15 is really robust. There's a lot, a lot in there. Um, it does talk about the role of the city forester, talks about um, the maintenance of private property. There's even protection of public and historic um, heritage trees. Because hmm. um, we did a whole thing on that of one. <laughs> well, it's in the code. So yeah, you, yeah. Your work was not. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's on, what I'm saying. That's yeah, nice yeah. to know that it's, it's there. there. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, it's also in development as well, and I've been navigating that because I'm doing, I, I just started doing plan reviews, so I've been looking at the codes and the trees, and they, they make recommendations for which trees are planted where, but there aren't really any guidelines for anywhere outside of downtown, so I struggle with that, and that was something that he does talk about in there, so that's mm -hmm. part of that code cleanup, I'd like to see guidelines for the whole city, not just downtown, and then make sure that the right guidelines and the trees planting specifications. He talks about that as well for the sidewalk situations and different things like that. So yeah, that's just I I don't want to do a deep dive into this right now, but um, parking, screening, um, all of that it's just mentioned throughout. Mm -hmm. all of that. So I just want to make sure that you guys are aware. We weren't, but there is this whole section. Mm -hmm. It might not apply to every situation, every code situation. Um, like the shore, the Sand Creek shoreline code, it does not have any reference to landscaping or trees or anything. No design standards there. So, like every permit and every you know um, allowance or conditional use or whatever can can incorporate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, our our plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To, to an extent. Yeah. But so, yeah, and I guess that kind of goes to that ordinance part is that it's not necessarily just the ordinance, mm -hmm. it's the entire code. city code. Yeah. City code. Yes. And compounds lead an ordinance in the, in the code. Are they? Is it the same uh, thing? No, there was no. Well, but. Um, you, did you have a? Um, my understanding is an ordinance is prior to it being approved by the council, and then it goes to code. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, but there's going to be a tree ordinance, and then um, then there's all these different codes for all these different land uses. Um, so like. Well, I don't know. The residential code or the zoning code or whatever and the, i mean there's so many different codes and so the tree ordinance might not end up in each of those things where it applies i, I don't know how to i don't know how to explain like a building location permit. that's a that has a code mm -hmm. the tree ordinance is over there somewhere else so what is in the tree ordinance that dictates tree you know our vision for trees or whatever um needs to also have a separate language in each code mm. yeah. which sounds you, you know it's, it's a lot of work it is of, yeah, it, it, it is and maybe yeah. it's already i mean i just know that there's gaps there yeah there's but i haven't dove into the whole thing but um, and is that the kind of you know job an urban forester would 
or a planner or like cleaning, a planner, cleaning up the code. <laughs> well, no, I mean, because I know you're not whole time urban forester. No. And, and, I'm not even part time. You're, okay, you're not even part time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is something that urban forester would do. Uh, yeah. it, it, and they would go to the planning director right. or the planner I mean, and they would work. We could have with consult house. out, you know, that, that is something that we could, you know, have somebody do. No. We could be consulted if we're not to have staff. Well, it, and for me, it's just way, another it's example of the re need. reason why yeah. we need a full time urban forester mm -hmm. because a lot of these things that sounds like over the years have just gotten overlooked because there just hasn't been. The, yeah, a change will be made and the, the, the change the will happen. And it sounds yeah, like something that yeah, takes yeah. time and you just don't have the person to do it. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, that was one task that uh, Jared Yost was given. Yeah. And it sat on his desk for a long, long time and nothing ever happened because I, I just can't imagine how you, where you begin with something because uh, like Molly says, it's, a, it's such um, a, a patchwork quilt of um, things that get added over the years and they don't all mesh. They don't all even agree. You can find a piece, a, a statement at some place that is, come at, completely at odds with a statement in another place and it's just it's, it's just a, it's a huge task and i would think it would have to go actually beyond the city forester to, yeah even if we had a full-time person yeah, I would, I that would yeah that that task is it befalls to the, to the to the city uh and anytime a new ordinance is presented mm -hmm. then due diligence in, in, including you know city staff and the city attorney are there contradictions elsewhere in code to, to, to what this new proposed ordinance is going to, to address? And so rather than having, uh, you know, well, here's the, the, the city tree ordinance uh, describing something about trees and parks. Well, that doesn't need to be chapter and verse in the parks ordinance, but someone should have checked before the, the tree ordinance was passed, adopted. Okay, is this going to conflict the, the uh, with, with with the parks ordinance, is it going to conflict with the streets ordinance, and and then all other uh, uh, all other appropriate ordinances or, or applicable ordinances? Yeah. It's robust. I mean, because like Bob says, undoubtedly there are some contradictions mm -hmm. that have crept in over the years, and but it's not the city foresters' responsibility on their first day on the job is okay well let me read every city ordinance and see where there might be a potential contradiction and uh, yeah mm -hmm. and there's two things there's that like going through the whole <coughs> thing as it's now and then there's a system in place for when an ordinance is about to be passed mm -hmm. that the correct person is is yeah. is seen as a, an expert and their you know their um advice yeah. is legitimately considered yeah. when that's being voted on. Yeah. I don't think that's happened. I mean, I don't think that's happening right <laughs> now. In yeah. relation to landscaping and trees. Okay. I agree. Oh, are you? <laughs> well, the trees I, have I always, try been, the trees have always been on the, you know, at the end of the list. Of yeah, yeah, no, I know. I know I was kind of pointing like, out the obvious here. You know, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, we see, you see the effect of what construction has done to trees. Where it was like no, there was no planning before to save the tree during the construction. So that, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. oh shoot, it's, mm -hmm. how come you yeah, saved it? Yeah, well, because, there's that piece. Yeah, yeah, too, for sure. Right, you're absolutely right. I have an example right now of a development that I am trying to hold accountable to their planting. And they planted crab apples in place and they are not to any sort of a spec that we can accept. And, then what am I looking for from mm -hmm. the specs? And that's where, where am I to be able to enforce right. it? I don't have a lot in there. And that's where I was saying, okay, well, while we don't have any specs or requirements or recommendations for that zone or that area of town, we do have them downtown. So let's do, reference that one. And then I do have this bizarre combination of, I don't want crab apples along a pedestrian pathway because of maintenance. So I'm able to use that. But I'm really stretching and pulling mm -hmm. for things to be able to enforce it. And you know, and there's definitely um, opportunities for interpretation. So yeah, there's there's some cleanup that needs to happen. But again, it goes back to your point: is it's it needs to be 
done by somebody yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, I'm going to have to excuse myself, Helen. No, okay. Yeah. Oh, thanks. thanks, Bill. It's here being good discussion, and I regret not being able to say. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bill. Thanks. Yeah, and yeah. we have uh, the final one is. Um, Provide education and public awareness of the importance of trees to the community, educate city staff, contractors, and the community on proper tree care, and encourage greater participation in tree steward activities. And that one is identified as a role of the tree committee in back, I think, in the 20s. Mm -hmm. So I think that one could be implemented. Yeah, I, I, yeah, definitely education is, is a, mm -hmm. one of our primary functions yeah, yeah. here. Um, I, I, I wonder about uh, educating contractors. Um, I, I have a simple that approach kind of goes to beyond our I always expertise. wish we all had these little trees where people put this smelly thing hanging on their mirror. But all of those people that are building, digging, gouging, and creating will have that little tree as a reminder there is something more than what you're doing that they need to remember. Yeah. It's, it's a, just a simple. I mean, that could be something that happened that's a product of this being adopted. And it's, that's an, I, I like the hand, hand tag idea and a publicity outreach for the contractors. I, I was actually thinking about once we get this plan cleaned up and it's ready to go out, that would be a great time to talk to all the contractors that we have and then maybe do a whole publicity outreach. Did you know that there is this code and do you know that this yeah. is the process? Oh, on the back of the little hanging tree could be codes. Oh, <laughs> so, so we do, so the city, has in the past endorsed the stormwater erosion education program, SEED. And contractors who are, are disturbing a time limit dirt in Tampa are to be certified in SEED. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're probably yeah. going to run over time. Um, okay. And I've been working on that program for years. Like it's been in place for like 15 yeah. years. We'll and so the city, you think you'll go over and there's a whole contractor list, they all get. That's a great program. <laughs> You know, notification but, of the and we teach the, right, um, the importance of maintaining vegetation and keeping it in place, and you know, creating your building footprint um, around existing vegetation when you can, and all that stuff, and you know, preventing erosion. So there's this huge piece of it about the importance of rooted vegetation. Essentially, it's erosion control. Uh -huh. um, and shade and stormwater reduction and all that stuff. Um, but I don't know where it stands now in the city's mind and in the city's world. Uh -huh. I've been asking for a long time, but um, it doesn't seem like anyone is enforcing that for contractors who are building the city. Are they all required that, to be at these meetings? They're required to be certified. And so you take the class mm -hmm. and then you're certified for three years. And then SEEP will send you a reminder that you need to be recertified. And then SEEP has also developed like advanced classes, you know, for people who don't want to keep taking this basic class. So who's actually putting on these classes? The University of Idaho and DEQ oh. and just a whole committee of people. Mm. I'm on it. I'm one of the instructors. Um, and we send that to the city every year. Oftentimes the city will send their staff, the county sends their staff. There's all kinds mm -hmm. of contractors who attend. But again, it's not reaching like residential folks. It's not addressing like trees in the right of way and proper tree in proper place. I mean, it's missing <coughs> some key components. Um, but I just want you to know that yeah, it's it's my and then, there idea that existed and that the way you described it sounds like, like exactly what the kind of need. thing that we need to be doing with more of a, uh, a maybe emphasis on on trees uh but even right. uh yeah like dovetailing program, with yeah. that I, seat program and reaching at the very least the contractors that you're already reaching through that program mm -hmm. Yeah, 
That sounds fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's an education cool. piece. What people do with it after that yeah. is, you know, always questionable. <laughs> um, I would love to see the city more actively involved in that program. I'd like them to be a teacher. Um, you know, having, you know, Amanda uh, Wilson as the infrastructure person just take a more active role in, in that. Um, or, or maybe there is an employee, another employee staff that I don't know about. I, I feel like I've lost track of the, um, what's the word, the programs of the city, the departments and who's in charge and mm. what they do. And so anyway, that's just been on the top of my list for a while is to try to nail down where C fits in in the city. I, I mean, I can ask, we talked about this at your meeting and um, I'm thoroughly impressed with the speed program. The first time I heard of it was when I got invited to speak the other day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it was fantastic. And I came back raving about it, just one of the highlights of the last few months, honestly, of you know, what's going on in the area um, from an educational component and then who all was there. I really appreciated they had folks from the Kalispell tribe who were talking about their erosion control. The presentation mm -hmm. by one of our engineering firms that works in the area talked about the soils and, and all the different areas and what's happening in the drainage. And mm -hmm. I, I came back, I actually told Greg, our utilities director, I'm like, we need him to do a presentation to the city. Like, yeah, and I, I, that was my goal after the CEAS classes or meeting was to yeah. connect with him. Yeah, I'd like him to talk to see. So he could be, yeah. Greg, right. Greg Lanning is our utilities director, and he would be in charge of stormwater. So that has shifted from Amanda. Mm -hmm. um, so I think Greg is the one, and I believe that that's part of what he's writing about with the Compton too, is the stormwater, and this plays into the stormwater there in the forest. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think. We're yeah. on the cusp of that synergy happening, Molly. Yeah, because I didn't know. Um, I reached out to Amanda about something and got his name. And then you brought it up again. Yeah. So I was reminded yeah. that. And, and I guess that's, I just, I feel like that awareness, like even that he exists. <laughs> well, he goes to every single city council meeting and almost every single one, he brings the most amazing props. So mm -hmm. if you're looking for some serious entertainment at city council, oh. He wow. is often it. He's been bringing in like rotten pipes and he's been educating us on wow. all the nuances of utilities in a way that I had never known existed. Yeah, so yeah. he's good. You'll really like him. He is, he's tremendous. And um, yeah, I think he's only been here maybe, I want to say maybe since March. He, he definitely was here for part of the winter because he's very keen on the rain on snow events <laughs> and talks about that as a phenomenon. You know, uh, phenomenon. Yeah, phenomenon <laughs> here. Yes. Yeah, we have. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. I, yeah, I digress, but. Yes. Um, that was, yeah, so, thanks for bringing that up. So, we're good. Yeah. 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 I think that's thanks a perfect so example <laughs> of, a, of an action item that, that would fit under that, mm -hmm. that goal of public outreach mm -hmm. and education. And, yeah. and even if that can be referenced in this as a as an example. How, how many city contractors are there? How, how big an audience are we talking about? I mean, is this dozen, hundreds, or? Um, well, do you, do you mean people who just work in the city doing dirt work? Or, or how yeah, many I'm contractors about, would show up to a seat? Well, this just well, says, this says, yeah, okay. That's a good question. Yeah. We get, I mean, our max is 25, I think, and we get around, on average, 15, 16. Okay. Um, for each class, we try to do it in the spring and the fall. It's really hard because the instructors, I mean, getting instructors is key, but the instructors get really um, busy. Actually, I'm thinking of a different class. There's also a real estate, <laughs> real estate class. Yeah, yeah. Um, on uh, water quality protection and, and oh, such. Um, cool. And we have Panhandle Health teaching that and IDL and like all the agencies get super busy in the time of year that we need to be teaching. Oh, and then mm. with SEEP, it's difficult because contractors have this very short window where they can work. Mm. Um, so we got to get them before or after that. Is it just once a year? 
No, it's been happening in the fall as well. Okay. Usually it's it's always spring. And then if we get requests, so the C committee will get requests to pull the class. Sometimes like an engineering yeah. firm or um, a company will want to get all their people certified or they all need to be certified because three years is up or whatever. So, but um, the, I don't know that that answers how many contractors yeah. there are because a lot of people are not right. taking right. the right. class, right. they're not right. informed about the class, whatever. Mm -hmm. Thank you, so. I didn't, I was, I'm aware of that requirement and I'm in a, a couple construction projects right now. So I'm glad to hear that. Okay, yeah, because uh, yeah, maybe you can get yeah, to the bottom I'll of like what yeah. what the requirement is. It's almost like something happened and it went away. I can't, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't pin it down. Try to get it and find it out. And, yeah, and see if there's some synergy. So I think we should probably wrap up because we're running out of time. But um, do you want to continue this conversation? I, the the yeah. deep dive? Okay. I think we I need to keep going on, yeah. on this. Um, okay. Because I don't know if we uh, really cover all the stuff we wanted to yeah. cover. Yeah. You, you probably have a better idea than I do. What else? No, no. You I, I'm talk about, but, leaning uh, on you off. But this is all I have is to get this flushed out. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Um, well, that's. I mean, yeah. I, but just as far as finishing up the work on the on the plan. Yeah, um, I mean, I have quite a few comments so far from everybody i'd love to get more but it sounds like some clarifying things could happen um my only concern is our next meeting is not until november and mm -hmm. we're trying to get this adopted so maybe would it be beneficial i'm thinking if i got the comments into a document and then you could all review it would be a pdf with or a word i'm not trying to ask jim what he prefers but comments. with the comments in it yeah um, I'm not sure what, how we want to proceed, but in the interest of moving forward, I, in order to get this adopted before the end of the year, you know, it's a two week process for me to get on the city council agenda. And then mm -hmm. basically if I'm going to present in December, there's two meetings in December and we need to work backwards from that. And yeah, well, I'm wondering, do we need to have another meeting before our regular scheduled meeting? If, if we, is there enough um, more that you want to cover? It would need to uh, like in a couple of weeks. I mean, this might be a Melissa question. Oh, if it's a public meeting or work it's, session, it's plenty of time. Okay. Oh, I mean, plenty oh. of time to post it. If you're doing it tomorrow, no. But other than that, yeah, no, I'm thinking a couple of weeks it, out. Yeah, in a couple of weeks. If um, we wanted to, um, what would you have time I think for? That was, yeah, yeah. Important. Seems like we're yeah. heavier than yeah. easily justified. So would you have time to um get a commented version out to us prior to that? Yeah, I'm not gonna do it this week. I'm leaving on Wednesday for something, but I would be able to do it okay. next Monday. Okay. Um or like I could do it Monday next Monday, and then we could have a meeting after. Well, let's see what two two weeks from today what what would that be we're looking around the first week of november mm -hmm. yeah halloween i think is the next monday the two mondays from now so and then, yeah halloween maybe. Is, is that a, is that halloween mm-hmm that's not like an official federal holiday. No, and we're meeting in the morning. We're meeting in the morning, not after dark. So, do you want to bring candy? We can trick or treat. Trick or treat bags. There we go. Where is trick or treat? Oh, Monday night, like on actual good. Yeah. So does that sound good to everyone? Should we um, try to get together in two weeks? Yeah. So that would be the thirty first. The third. Yeah, that would be yeah. the thirty first. Monday, October eight thirty. October. Let me just double check. Okay. Yes, and the room is open. So. At the same time. Uh -huh. Eight thirty. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Why don't we Why don't we um plan on doing that? We'll um get a and I'll get commented copy out through you, and then um, yeah. we'll uh, everyone can have some time to um, uh, read through it again. And, uh, 
and, and take another look at it then. You understand? Yeah. Um, so we'll have to post it as a public meeting, so I'll be sure. It, yeah. We'll have to post it next week, the week of the 24th. And so you'll have it sometime that week. It just has to be posted in advance. So are we going in this, are we tackling a specific portion of the plan or are we all just reviewing the whole thing again? Um, I was, I was thinking, I didn't have a specific portion in mind okay. to cover, but. Um, we just went through goals. Yeah, we're only <laughs> on page 10. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Very well, but we, I mean, you know, we, but you, the goals is yeah, I think the most really important. Right. And, and so much of the so much of it is mm -hmm. outlining the benefits of the trees that we don't have to hash through. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Um, but, well, um, if we could, I would like to take a moment just to acknowledge yes. that we have a yeah. yeah. guest here, and I apologize for not recognizing oh, you earlier. Thank you for good. coming. I was expecting to be quiet. Uh, <laughs> thank you for your patience. Yeah. Would you like to introduce yourself? Lee Bellenberg, resident. Thanks. And I was hoping to talk to you, Maeve, after the meeting on a thing that I have. Um, um, yeah, that, it doesn't relate to this, to the tree committee? Uh, to the arborist. It's a question for the arborist. Sorry. Yeah, not, sure. So, or the forester, I should say. Sure, sure. Well, I was looking at the section, there's this section further on called program actions. Yeah, I mean, all, I'm and the, the different priorities. I wonder if you know that would be worth worthy um, something to spend a little more time on. Which one is it? I'm sorry. Pages. Let's see. Starts starts on page seventy-seven. Oh, right at the end. And looks like it goes. Oh, it's yeah. it's the section before the conclusion. Yeah. 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 But that's it's sort of. Good. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or seventy looks like it starts on page seventy-six, maybe. I don't have the numbers on the pages here, but uh, well, the title is important. Yeah, but it says program actions. Yeah. 77. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. program actions. That's a good one. 77. 77. Program actions. Sharon, will you be able to be back? Yeah, I'll be for, I'll be around on Halloween. So yeah, I'll be here. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Costumes are optional. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, if there's no no any other announcements for business. Um, if not, um, let's see. I'd like to adjourn the meeting. Well, let's see. Our next meeting will be October 31st at 8:30 on Monday. Nice. And um, it's uh, 9.52 and the meeting is adjourned. Mm.